All right, what's going on, guys? It's been a minute. Um, we were going to record week one, and our schedules didn't really align up right. But go over the lineup that we had for week one. Yeah, it was uh, – we kind of went out on a limb on Daniels and his rushing ability. I thought going against Todd Bowles, he'd want to blitz like he usually does, plus a little more, especially against a rookie. And Daniels got there. I mean, two rushing scores. One of them was kind of finicky. Brian Ronson got stuffed with the one, then he kind of vultured it. Um, but 80 rushing yards is what we wanted. He got there. Jonathan Taylor got stuffed at the one, and then Richardson swiped him. That was not fun. ETN fumbled into the end zone. That was fun. McLaurin had, like, three targets. That was fun. But the best play on the slate that I had, like, locked the whole week – I thought at least on FanDuel, he's at 5,600 was Chris Godwin. Just way too cheap. He was almost 3K cheaper than Mike Evans. Mike Evans still had a great game too at 8K, but Chris Godwin was way too cheap, 3 x Terry Kill got there on one play basically, which is what he does every slate anyways. Um, he was fine. We played, we punted Gusecki at tight end because tight end looked disgusting and it was probably the worst tight end slate I've ever seen in my life at the end of the day. Um, and he was like a toe tip away from scoring. They called it back. It was neither here or there. It didn't really impact all that much. And then we ran Eckler because we thought Daniels would have to uh, like think and dunk his way down the field. And then Saints D was free against the Panthers. So um, uh, that's kind of where we ended up. It wasn't the worst day ever. It doubled up, but you just want more out of a tournament slate like we usually play. So it's whatever. Yeah, it was an interesting day. Usually the first couple weeks are a little weird because some of the teams are trying to, like, get back in the groove of things. You know, guys get traded or signed with different teams, and there's that issue. And Caleb definitely had that issue <laughs> just from, like, that lineup. I had my own lineup that I had, and that was kind of a shits and giggles one. <clears throat> it had DeAndre Hopkins – more Allen, Caleb, and I knew Hopkins was on a, um, he was on a snap count. But how many times have we seen like snap count and then they play a hundred percent of the snaps? You know what I mean. So like I took pretty that much what list. we saw last night with Aching. That was my lineup. That was the worst one ever, and I debated. I will say, too. DFS Twitter is so toxic. Like. Everyone it. was just complaining the whole day, like, A-Chain's not going to do anything. A-Chain is going to have 30 fantasy points, and there's no in between, something like that. And lo and behold, <laughs> the NFL is just going to lie to you. They always lie to you. You don't know anything. So just either play him and don't complain about it if he gets you three. Like, it's just a thing. Right. Gotta love DFS Twitter. Um. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go position by position and on FanDuel and I'll scroll down and we'll kind of give our two cents. Maybe find some contrarian guys, some guys that are going to be high owned. So. All right. So here's what we got at quarterback right now. Who's sticking out to you as like maybe your number one option. Oh, it's really tough to be honest. I really want to target. <laughs> I don't know. The Bengals' offensive scheme is just not working without T. It seems so. <clears throat> I'm, I'm off there this week for now, at least in single entry. It's just not going to work. But Lamar's, he's fine. He's probably a okay cash play. I for GPPs, I just I don't like playing top tier quarterbacks in scripts that aren't competitive. And I think the last I checked Baltimore was like nine point favorites. So I think I'm off Lamar. Mahomes is okay. Easy stacking option with Rice. He's still a little cheap on FanDuel. Richardson, sure, he can get there on his own, honestly. If you don't want to stack him, I don't like single stacking. I mean, naked pretty much. Um, but sure, I mean, every game he's played healthy, he's had over like 20 fantasy points, I think. Stroud is good in the nightcap. I don't like that Fandles put the night games on the slate. It kind of ruins 
the sweat for the whole day, but you know, he's fine. Kyler is probably my one for now, but I have a feeling he's gonna get ownership and that might steer me away. Daniels, again, he's fine. He's probably cheap as he could come last week at 7K flat. Now he's probably appropriately priced. Goff, what they probably have the highest over under of the slate. I think I saw 51. Easy stack with the Monra. Good run backs too. I don't mind it. And being such a pop pocket passer only, you know he's going to carry someone else along the way if he does get there. So I don't mind Goff. Dak is okay. I think the Saints just kind of had everything fall their way last week. And they're really not – I don't think they're that good. I think the Panthers were just that bad in that singular game. And the Cowboys usually roll at home. So I don't mind Dak. Herbert, I'm off. Low total. Uh, Stafford. I'd rather just play another guy with the same capabilities. He's playing on the road, too. It's not my favorite. You should go with home quarterback. Baker's okay. Same thing with, I guess, same thing you could say for Stafford and Baker. Burrow, no. Purdy, no. Gino, no. Carr, no. Lawrence, no. And yeah, all these guys are just trash bags down here. Um, quarterback looks like a top tier guy to me. And then just go from there. Oh, 8K up is probably where I'll be. Maybe maybe 7,700 up because I like Dak too. Yeah, I don't have – this is definitely a slate just to pay up and do a stack like that. I'm off Stroud, little bias here against my Bears, but Bears defense is too good now. I'm just – you know, they didn't look that great in the first half, and then Simone Biles is – husband blocked the punt or whoever did that and whatever but Herbert is interesting the only downside like you said is low total but playing against Carolina I mean if Derek Carr can put up three touchdowns against Carolina I know Herbert doesn't have Chris Olave and Rahid or Shahid whatever the guy's name is he's got Quinn Johnson I actually saw Josh Palmer is questionable but I mean Herbert can maybe do something, but that's kind of if you're running multiple lineups. I'm on Burrow a little bit, and the only reason is Kansas City and Cincy. I know you like um, the offense doesn't run well without T. He's doubtful already, and I know there's a whole drama still with um, um, what's his name, Jamar Chase, but. <clears throat> I'm in between that because it's like there was something that like Jamar wouldn't call Mahomes like the greatest quarterback in the NFL right now. There was like that whole thing. <laughs> so part of me thinks like he's going to play more, but it's also he's not getting that contract. So there's like that thing there. <clears throat> I agree with you on Baker and Stafford. Goff would be good with the runbacks. I would mainly focus on like maybe these guys here. Which probably seems pretty obvious, but we'll just have to see where ownership goes. Like if let's say Kyler ends up being like 20%, I'm probably just gonna have to find another play. Or maybe yeah. I play like the popular stacks probably could be him and McBride, because McBride is still fairly priced. Maybe just playing McBride by himself and then playing another stack along with him. It's probably not going to get to work. Caleb 6-9. And I will say I'm Daniel Jones is playing the worst secondary to ever exist, but he is also Daniel Jones. So he's, <sighs> That's a good he's point. there. He's if you're there. playing multiple lineups, I mean, you know, because we only play one. So normally, like, you know, maybe even Lamar. But, like, we're going to go from, like, Dak all the way up to, like, maybe Mahomes. But you can get a little different with, like, Baker and Stafford. And if you really want to do Burrow, you can definitely get a little different with that. But, I mean, you can pay up for Fields at 7K. But I can't get I can't, into that. I can't play anything in that, in that game with a 35 total. That quarterback at least two. No, I know. It's just people playing multiple lineups and all that. 
Um, running back. One thing before we get into everything, I saw something that said McCaffrey was ready to go. I don't know if you've seen it. I saw that. I think it's baloney, and I think they're going to keep him out another another week. I don't see the need to push him. Mason was serviceable enough. I think you just keep him, keep him healthy, keep him practicing. He was limited in practice yesterday, I think. I am, uh, and I, I just Jordan assume... Mason. Jordan Mason's going to be like seventy percent in everything if McCaffrey yeah. ends up getting ruled out. <laughs> but fifty five hundred. They're playing a team that's a little depleted, anyways, especially in offense. You know, Darnold and I don't think Addison is not going to play. I just don't see the need to push him. I think Mason will, will get the start here. Uh, 5,500, like you said, he's going to be mega chalk and uh, probably will have to eat it because the low tier price running backs this week are atrocious, like very hard clicks. And if Mason even falls, fails and gets you like seven or six, whatever, one X. It's still okay as long as you hit the right, you know, high price guys to pair along with him because that's what you're shooting for, anyways. So I think Mason is a pretty easy play. Paul is interesting. Tyne's front is pretty good. He also is pretty much game script proof, from what I've seen, like over the years. Even last game, they were getting stopped, still 25 touches, 90% snap share plus. I just don't see how he does at least 2x. Taylor's in a good spot. We just saw Barkley destroy Green Bay in a good script against a team that probably won't move the ball that well with Willis. I mean, maybe they surprise me. A little surprises me, but I haven't seen much out of him. Mixon is okay. He looks good. He looked healthy, which was strange because... I swear in camp, all I read was he's not 100%, and then he just looked like the best he's ever looked. Um, I think Kyron's a pretty great play because he's priced where you don't really want to click him compared to playing like JT or uh, some of the other guys in this range. So I like him. I, I can't click Gibbs at 8K when he's splitting with Monty. Like, why would I pay 8K for Gibbs? And his 15 touches when I could pay for Kyron for 100 more for his 25 touches. It just doesn't make sense. Kamara, I don't really love here in a negative script. Maybe they dink and dunk his way to like 15 fantasy points, but I think I'm good there. Kenny Walker, I haven't seen the update on him, whether he's going to play or not. It's not a very good matchup anyways. I, th- I still don't see a lot of offense in that game happening. I think that's going to be like a 20 to 13 game. I think I saw something he didn't practice and he's still questionable. And if that's the case, Charbonnet is obviously the second guy. But I mean, kind of like you said, it's like a weird game and whatever that can be maybe like a maybe. Because, like, if let's just say for us, for an example, if we play Pacheco and we do Mason, you know what I mean? And then the flex spot, you can put Charbonnet in there if Kenneth Walker is actually ruled out. But I know yeah, that's kind of a weird I, game, though. I saw Charbonnet was already at pretty priced up compared to like what Mason is. I think Charbonnet is like 63. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather pay the same Mason price, you know? Um, yeah, I don't like that price. So never mind. Charbonnet is pretty effective when he does play, though. I don't hate the play all that much. It's just. Low scoring game, in my opinion. Don't really see him getting there. Rashad White. I just never play this guy. And I don't think I'm ready to jump on the train right now. Anyways. So I think I'm good there. Henry is interesting because he could have a multiple touchdown game. But even if he does, it's just like, say he has two scores and 70 yards. It puts you at 19. You're like, oh, okay. That's not the ceiling you want, though, from your running backs. JT could put up 30. I don't know. I, Henry seems like a guy I'd rather play like a player prop thing with multiple touchdowns than playing him straight up. Checo's in a good spot, but I do think he'll carry some ownership if Mahomes does not get ownership. And if that's the case, I kind of like Moss on the other side of that game for leverage. I think since he would have to find a way to establish their own game if they want to be competitive at all. So 
cost is fairly priced too. I think it's around that $6,300 range as well. Um, ETN, sure. I mean, he screwed us last week, but whatever. Monty I think he deserves a, I think ETN deserves a one game suspension. Yeah. If he would have scored that touchdown <laughs> where he fumbled it, he wouldn't be on that list. I didn't see Jacob's got absent injury report, but that's interesting. Uh, it could be in line for a lot of work, if, but I didn't realize he was uh, dealing with a little bit of a injury here. But he didn't look all that effective last week. But again, playing Philly versus playing the Indy front is completely different. I mean, we just saw Mixon go for a career game basically against him. So I like Jacobs. Aaron Jones is fine. Stevenson is. I mean, he has the touch equity at 7K, but again, same thing I said with Walker, just, this game is going to be real ugly, and I don't see a lot of fantasy outcomes coming out of it. Dobbins is a little priced up for me. Pollard is fine. Najee is fine. Connor is, I think, a pretty good play at 6,500, especially if you don't play Kyler. Moss, like I said, I like him. Ford's good. The sixty-three hundred dollar range is for sixty-five is pretty interesting. Moss, Ford, um, Robinson, no. Singletary, eh. Gus, no. Blake Horman, six K still, even though he DMP is funny. Um, Eckler, no. Chuba, definitely not. Yeah, there's just not much else there. That's why Mason 55 is just pretty clear in those lower price guys. Yeah, I don't have much else really to add to that, but here, here's what I find funny. This is what J.K. Dobbins did week one, and 68 is a little high for him, obviously, and there's, I mean, do I think he can do what he did, like, week one? Can he put up maybe somewhere near the same performance? Maybe, but that's kind of iffy. The one thing I have with Pollard is obviously against a Jets defense who's they're supposed to be good, but they said um, the head coach said that they're going to try to get Spears a little bit more involved week two. So that's a little interesting. Jones, no Montgomery. Who's the who's the backup to Jacobs if he ends up not playing? Well, like, I saw that Marshawn Lloyd was warming up in practice too after uh, he was out week <laughs> one and he's been questionable for a bit. I thought he uh, was on IR. No. No, there's someone else on. Oh, uh, AJ Dillon. He's like out for the year. Okay. I don't yeah, know why so I've been mixed up. The Packers backfield is pretty interesting how that shakes out. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, if Marshawn Lloyd is a go and Jacobs is not, that'd be. I wonder what he's priced at. He's probably like five k flat or something. Oh yeah, that is, that is cheap, 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 cheap. But then again, what kind of workload are you going to give a guy with a hamstring injury? That is true. Not, yeah. not that much. Yeah, it's some top tier guys, Taylor Mixon. I did see like Breeze Hall is projected for like 23 fantasy points. And then number two is like, I can't remember who I wrote down. I think it's like Jonathan Taylor at like 18. So there's a huge discrepancy there. But Kyron, he's Kyron. He's going to do whatever. Gibbs, I think, is overpriced. But it's kind of the same thing with like Kamara. I don't like this week, but like, Rashad White, for an example, like Mixon, White, Pacheco even a little bit. Guys that can catch the ball and be like a receiver as well. I always have a little bit more love for them because they have a higher ceiling. You know, obviously wide receiver screens and stuff like Derrick Henry is a guy that can somewhat do that. But I mean, he's on the one yard line. They're going to give it to him. There's stuff like that. Um, I always have a little bit more love for them. What do you think about Najee Harris? Uh, I'm going back and forth on that. It's one, the total sucks. 
two fields had like 14 carries last week. If if Russ were to get the start, I would like Najee, but I don't know. I just I, I think I would play him if if Russ were to get the start at 6,600. But if Fields plays again, I think the carries are just too limited. Even though he, he I, I think he still had 20 carries last week, I, but he could get like also, 25 if Russ were to play. It's also interesting just because Jalen Warren is a guy they're pretty high on yet. Najee got majority of the carries last week and had more of a more snap share and whatever. But yeah, I think uh, I think that's just because Warren's still coming back from that. I think he had a hammy, but oh, that's right, that's right. Uh, let's move on to wide receiver because this is where it gets interesting, in my opinion. Yeah, the it's going to be tough to collect these high price guys just because. The stacks are not going to be as popular. I, would, I mean, Amon Ross is going to be popular just because I think golf in the highest scoring game is going to be a little bit of a thing. But um, Lamb, I don't think, is going to be all that popular. Uh, and Dak absolutely cooks at home. And I think the Saints could regress majorly this week. So I don't mind Lamb. Jefferson could see a huge target share this week. I don't think San Fran secondary is as good as they were made out to be this week either, just because, you know, we had the corpse of Rodgers and freaking Alan Lazard out there. If the Jets are going to win football games, it's going to take, like, Garrett Wilson 100 yards and Brees Hall two touchdowns every game. Um, Jamar, like you said, there is some major beef between Cincy and KC. I don't think I can click him just yet. I'd rather pay up for one of the other guys. Wilson, I can't play at 8K. Mike is fine. He was the same price last week. He can do the same thing. Cup will probably be the highest on the slate, if I had to guess. He's not priced appropriately for a guy that could probably see upwards of 15 targets. Does Arizona game plan for that? Probably. I mean, I'm not an NFL coach, but I would assume they have a game plan for Cup. But then again, the offense probably has a game plan to get him open, so... I like Cup at 77. Nico, I assume, is going to play if he's just dealing with the illness. Uh, like I said, I like Stroud a little bit here and there for, for playing multiple lineups. It's going to be hard to pick between Collins, Diggs, and Dell every week, though. Um, Debo's probably going to gain ownership just because CMC is out. He gets some goal line, you know, work there. Adams, I don't think the offense is good enough to play him right now. Especially, I mean, they're going to be trailing, supposedly. It's trailing script. Maybe they just throw the ball the whole game. Gets 10, 12 targets. He could hit at 7K. I can't play Ayuk. Rice is a good play. Moore's fine if you want to run back for the Houston stack. Not on Olave. Not on DK. Not on Pickens. Marv. For all the crap that's been talked on Twitter this week, you get best believe he's fallen in the end zone. Do I want to play him in this range? I don't know. I think I like neighbors more. Actually, I know I like neighbors more. Pittman, eh, he's just he's just a guy, you know. I think I like Cooper more than Pittman. I think the Jags Cleveland game has sneaky shootout potential. Flowers, no, because I'm not playing Lamar. Godwin's a good run back. Worthy, hell no, at 6,200. If he scores twice again, just bury me. I I don't care. I just can't play him at that, that price for his, you know, three targets and one end around. Nothing else here is really sticking out. Lockett's questionable, so maybe DK gets a bump. I didn't see what he was dealing with. Uh, McLaurin killed us last week. I assume they'll probably try to find a way to get him in the game plan this week. Jacksonville's weird. They just have so many mouths to feed. I don't know who to pick. It's kind of like the Houston thing. Like, Brian Thomas, Kirk, Evan Ingram, they're all viable, but I would not know who to tell you week to week. Watson's... <sighs> I mean, he's cheap for the talent, but Malik Willis, ugh. 
nothing else down here really i mean keep going i don't, I don't really see all that much why received value from what i remember yeah i think it's basically spend up at one running back mason and then it's just like a bunch of mid-tier wide receivers probably and then if you can fit a stud by punting tight end but I, that's probably gonna be the most popular build so i'm gonna have to fiddle with how to like get around that the one thing that kind of caught my eye is McConkey at 57. It's just, I know you said it's like a low total and um, Chargers offense is a little weird this year because there really is no wide receiver one. I know um, Johnston has freaking Butterfingers and all that, but Lad scored last week and I know his Prop is probably going to be in the high 30s, low 40s for receiving. But um, Jordan Edison got ruled out earlier, so Jefferson's a good play. But it's kind of weird with San Fran's defense. But Sam Darnold isn't too bad. He's like an average guy. And, I mean, week one he played the Giants, so he looked like Tom um, Brady out there just throwing it across the field. <laughs> Keenan and Rome are questionable and are going to be game 10 decisions. My thought process is originally Rome was week to week, and then they said day to day, and they kind of just said, like, they're going to see how he feels throughout practice and whatever. I think him and Keenan both did not practice today, which can mean two things. They're not going to play, or it's just extra rest and you know what I mean? It's just extra rest. I don't know. I think that Keenan might play because he had this heel injury and he was limited in practice up until week one. And he got a lot of targets from Caleb. And he also dropped Caleb's first career touchdown that I'm still upset about. But, and I mean, it was a dot too, which, which was kind of nuts. And I know we were talking about we don't like the Sunday night football game <clears throat> on Main Sleep, but DJ Moore is just standing out because if my thought process is correct with no Rome, I mean, DJ Moore just signed that extension. And if somehow Keenan doesn't go, DJ's like got to be the guy. He's going to get 15 targets minimum, probably even more. Um, Rice is good, like you said. Ayuk's got butterfingers after being a diva all of camp, so I don't like him. <laughs> I think we got to play Cup just because Pook is out. Um, it's just so hard to get away from him. Like he's gonna be thirty percent in my in my head. It's probably he should be like fifty percent. So I'm gonna play him. But Jaden Reed questionable. I know it said it in here, but yeah. I just don't see he could get you like 10 and you're just like eh. okay he kind of screwed me but he also can get you 30 and bury you very quickly so I just I think you just gotta click him um I'm trying to think who else I had another thought maybe if I scroll through worthy really, I don't mind too much if he's your like wide receiver three in like whatever but, I mean, if you gave me Rice or Worthy, I'd go with Rice. Because I think week one he had like 80-something receiving yards or some crap like that. So he's still the number one guy. Cooper, I like. Neighbors against Washington's defense, even though it's Daniel Jones as a quarterback, sure. Nothing else really sticks out to me. Mike Evans is kind of the same. I don't know, man. I keep looking at Jamar Chase. I'm like, I'm. it's my narrative side that's, like, it's a rivalry. It's kind of like, you know, they've all, like, talked back and forth about each other. So, but I don't know the whole thing with the contract. That's the thing that's kind of stopping me. Tight end. You were talking about McBride a little bit, right? Yeah, he's... He should be like a thousand more expensive. I think he should be in that Andrews Kelsey range, not the Evan Ingram range. <laughs> but um, again, they priced up likely because you know he had the game of his life. 
do I think they still continue to run the offense similarly? Probably. Do I think he continues to get 10 targets every game? Definitely not. And I think Andrews probably bounces back and has an okay game here. Do I want to play him at 7K? Only if I'm playing Lamar. Kelsey, the snap share is just like, I think he only had like 70% snaps or something last week. I don't think I can get there for that. It's 75. Now, obviously, the touchdown equity is there, but I don't know. I always lean towards punting tight end, and it usually works out. But obviously, there's like three weeks out of 18 that, you know, Kelsey or Laporta is going to drop 24, and I'm going to be dead. Uh, I didn't see if David. Oh, he's already out. I think Cooper I was is, just like, gonna bring that is, up, yeah. a, is a great play. Amari Cooper, I don't think he's going to be that owned. And I think you could see at least 10 targets this week. Because the secondary that is pretty bad. This um, is interesting to these two guys. I assume Jake's out. I assume Schultz is in. But I don't know. Brevin Jordan here. I don't even know the backup for. It's, it's just it's not kind of weird. Thing. No, I know. It's just weird because I was watching the Cowboys game last week and he had a hard time putting weight on his knee. So part of me thinks that Ferguson might sit out that. Yeah. I don't see the reason to play him this week. Right. Um, Gusecki, I mean, we could go back to him over the Please touchdown. Not. And that's all you need is three catches of touchdown. Boom. You're at 10 fantasy points, 2x. Obviously, you want two and a half or 3x. That's a little pushing it for Gusecki. But that's kind of what we hoped for last week when he was 4,500. And he got one and they took it away. Um, Ertz is priced like a backup. And he could be a little bit of a safety blanket for Jade. But he is like, you know, older than my grandfather. So I don't know. Ertz is, eh, I guess. The upside really isn't there for him. But he could get you like 10. Same with Parkinson. He didn't really have that much target share for the amount of routes he ran, but he's out there. He's got the cardio, at least. Um, God, it's ugly down here. Yeah, I don't even want to keep scrolling. No. There's not really anything else. I mean, it's probably better it's... to punt here, but, I mean, you can play Atkins, who's like 40-something. I can't remember. I just saw him down here. Oliver's it's, been getting a lot of snaps just because of Hawkinson being out. That's like a, another punt ish play. Juwan Johnson is actually like I think he's actually good, but they just never <laughs> run anything for him to be involved. And with Moreau being not concussion protocol, you know, maybe spot, he gets yeah. an uptick in uh I don't know, I just it's just weird. Um I mean Bowers is fine. I guess. I didn't really expect him to get that much target share in week one, but he did. And that surprised me. 5,300 is probably fair. Fryermuth got that extension and they just didn't do anything with him at all. So, who the hell knows? Well, he's got Justin Wait, Fields. As his did he play? So. He played week one. Fryermuth? I honestly don't remember. Yeah, I don't. Four targets, four receptions, 27 yards. Yeah, the, the offense is just so bad. I think everyone's just going to click McBride. It's so easy. He's mid price. He's in a high total. He's a good parent with Murray. I also and... think people are going to go with likely, which I get it, but it's also like. I'm not clicking he's not going to do last week. Exactly. Like, that's just. Insane. If you expect that again, you are insane. <laughs> he, I don't he expect could, that. He, he could score again, but he's not dropping 24 again. If he does, I quit. <laughs> the amount of times I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, yeah, uh, there's really nothing else, really, that I like here. Atkins, if you want to play the backup for Cleveland, if you don't want to play Cooper, 47, I guess. And that's, yeah, tight end yeah. is just so gross. But... I think that should just about do it, though. Do you got anything else you want to say before we get out of here? No, not really. I think that about covers it. This is just the first look at the slate. Obviously, ownership depending. We'll be closer to lock. We'll give her some more thoughts on Twitter. 
So make sure to follow us there and like and subscribe if you haven't already.